Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today we're going to talk about Lightburn's desktop. When you're new to Lightburn, it can be pretty intimidating only because there's so many different areas that you know nothing about. The goal today is just to review uh, what the Lightburn interface is, the different functions, how you can customize it, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a simple project and go through a workflow uh, so you can get the basic understanding of how this desktop work area here coincides with your layers uh, pane over here along with your laser and your library, your art library and your material setting library here. And so <clears throat> this is a pretty basic video today. This is designed for somebody that's brand new to Lightburn that's just getting into it and not sure quite how to use it. Um, I'm going to just cover some of the things that you want to learn right off the bat. So let's go ahead and get into it and we'll take this step by step. One of the first things that you're going to want to do when you're using Lightburn is to get a mouse with a scroll wheel on it. If you're on a PC, um, when you use that scroll mouse, if you scroll your mouse forwards or backwards, that will give you the ability to zoom in and out. And if you hold the uh, scroll wheel down, that will give you your pan. On a Mac, if you're using a magic mouse, you can hold down the option key and then use your uh, scroll area for zooming in and out. And if you're on a Mac and you want to pan, just hold down the space bar and you can go ahead and pan around. Using these four icons up here, if you're using like a touchpad or something like that, is a really painful way to get around light burn. Um, so if you can, use a mouse with either a, either a magic mouse for a Mac or a, a mouse with a scroll wheel for PC. And you moving around the desktop gets a whole lot easier when you're using Lightburn. So get a mouse, it'll uh, be a game changer for you if you haven't done that. The next thing we're going to talk about is just getting your desktop so it's easily read and you don't have any problems seeing what you need to do. And what I mean by that is Lightburn has the ability to change the size of your icons along with the size of all of your text. And depending on whether you're using, um, you know, a laptop or a desktop, sometimes the defaults are a little bit small. So I'll show you how to change that. If you come up here to this gear icon and click on that, you're going to come down here to where it says toolbar icon size. And you see if you slide that along, you can really change the way um, Lightburn looks and you have the ability to grow your icons and it's a global change. So anywhere there's an icon in the program, it will either get bigger or smaller based on um, the size that you choose. Same way with the fonts. If you change your font size, um, it will change all of the fonts or text in the program to either get bigger or smaller. It's a great feature and depending on what you're using, whether you're using a small laptop or a desktop, this can really make your uh, Lightburn experience much better. The next thing I'm going to show you is you'll notice that in your icons, I'm going to just select these <clears throat> shapes so these icons will light up. You'll notice that there's a couple of icons that have drop down lists. So you've got to click your icon before you see all of the different um, options. And uh, anything that's got this little bitty uh, corner triangle is a drop down list. Well, I'm one of those guys that I prefer not to have to uh, go on an Easter egg hunt to find my commands. So I'm going to show you how to change something simple in Lightburn where you will eliminate these drop down lists and all of these icons will be spread across um, this uh, icon bar. And that way you don't have to guess where those commands are. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to come up to window. We're going to open the window and this section right in here is kind of where you turn on and turn off all of your tabs that are illustrated over here 
and also all of your selections and your different icon bars. What we're going to do is we're, we're going to turn on the Arrange Long, which means it gets rid of the drop-down list. So we're going to click on that, and you notice it added a bunch now. But there's some that are duplicated, and we don't need that. So I'm going to come back up here to Window, and I'm going to turn the Arrange off. And so now what's happened is instead of having any drop-down lists, I have all my icons across the top here that are apparent, and I don't need to drill down to try to find what I need to uh, use a particular command. Um, that's helpful. There's plenty of room on your icon bar. Give that a try. Um, that way you'll have all of your commands apparent. Next, I'm going to show you how to add an additional tab here. Let's say that you purchased a camera for your light laser and you need to add the, the, the camera tab to uh, one of your panes over here. I'm going to show you how to do that and this goes with any tab that you might want to add. We're going to go up to Window. I'm going to open that and we're going to come down here to Camera Control. You notice that there's not a check mark by it. So when I select Camera Control, um, it, it added it here, and typically it won't. Uh, that's because I've added it once before. So usually what will happen when you add an additional pane, it'll just generate kind of a floating uh, dialog box, or it might add it way up here um, to where now you have three different panes. The problem with that is you're going to get too much of it scrunched up. I don't recommend doing that. So if it does that, if it installs it, and now you've got three different sections, just grab that extra uh, tab and pull it out. And then make your dialog box as small as it'll go. Grab it by the title bar, and then just hover over that section. And when it turns that different color, let it go. And now it just added it to this upper pane. Now I've got to rearrange my uh, different tabs, so I'm going to grab my Cuts and Layers tab and just drag it over. And now I've got this to always be on top. I've got my camera control added, and I still only have two panes. The next thing uh, that I wanted to show you is how you can actually scale your different panes. Uh, so you'll notice if I hover my mouse over this vertical bar right here, you're going to get a, a sizing bar. And I can actually drag this over and scale this appropriately. And in some cases, you may want to do that. Let's say that I've just got something over here so I can get a layer fired up. Um, depending on your workspace and how your workspace is laid out, you can drag this and grow or shrink that. So if for some reason you need a little bit more space in any of these, uh, you have the ability to do that. So you can grow it horizontally. You can also grow it vertically. So you can shrink one down and expand the other. Uh, again, depending on which uh, tab you're using, this can be really handy. And it's available to you pretty much any time you want to rescale that. So um, using your uh, scale handles can be very handy. And it'll uh, get you dialed in on exactly what you want to do. Next, I wanted to show you that uh, you have the ability to move these, this color panel down here. This is default, and in some cases, if you're on a Windows machine, uh, these will disappear on you. And so anytime you see these little dots, um, these dots here, these dots up here, um, what that means is you can actually grab and move these different uh, sections around. So if I wanted to move this color panel and I wanted to put it in another location on my desktop, all I would have to do is come over to these uh, dots and grab that. And now I have the ability I could go ahead and put it there. I could grab it and put it on top. Oops. Put it on top. I could put it pretty much wherever and uh, it, it doesn't matter uh, where it goes. It's uh, completely up to you. So that's kind of a personal preference thing. But you can put it on top, you can put it on side, 
Um, lots of options down, just depends on what you prefer your workspace. I kind of like it on the side, especially on a PC, because a lot of times I can't see that bottom row. And so this uh, is not a bad way to go. So just know that you have the ability to move this stuff around. The next thing we're going to talk about is how I use uh, the color layers and uh, what my workflow looks like. I approach this a little bit differently than some people, and I'll explain why I believe this works really well. The first thing that I will tell you is if you plan on assigning a setting to each one of these colors, um, you're going to build yourself into a corner down the road. And the only reason I say that is your settings are never going to stay the same. With materials the way they are these days, your settings for cutting inch, for cutting quarter inch Baltic birch is going to change. So it's not a set it and forget it type of deal. And so the, the process that I've adopted that seems to be working really well for the last year and a half is I use color as a as a function not a setting and what i mean by that if we would start a simple project let's say that we've got an 8 by 10 sign or an eight a little cutting board that maybe is 8 by 10 and i want to put my logo in the middle of it i really only use three colors and then the, the rest of what i do is all going to be stored in my material library over here because it's constantly going to change. And the beauty of that is, I only have to remember functions for three colors. Now, I don't care what three colors it is. Pick your favorite three colors. But the benefit of using uh, colors as a function uh, will really come back to you when you pull that file up six months later and you're wondering what was a cut, what was an engrave, what was a score. And so let's just build a simple uh, design here and I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag out a rectangle. I don't care what size it is because I'm going to size it up here in this little uh, sizing box. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that layer black. Now black is my frame layer and what that means is whatever I'm putting in my laser, whether it's a cutting board or a piece of wood, that's what this black layer is going to represent. So what I'm going to do is let's just say that it was a pre-done uh, cutting board. And let's say it was going to be uh, 16 inches wide by 12 inches high. And now I've got my cutting board that's 16 by 12. This represents the cutting board itself. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. Okay. Um, and, and typically I'm going to... Uh, this is just for reference, meaning that I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a logo. So let's all go over here and grab my logo. I will put uh, 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 some video links on how you can build your library from scratch if your manufacturer doesn't provide you with one. And even if they do provide you with one, um, I'll link a video uh, to where you can modify your existing library. So if I came down here and turn that off, I'm going to go to our art library and let's just drag this out. Okay. And I'll, let's say that I wanted this uh, school logo in the middle of this Okay, so now I have my cutting board illustrated. I've turned that layer off because that's just a representation of the, of the material that I put in my wood or in my laser, excuse me. And then I, let's say that for some reason this was a different color. I would convert it to blue because blue is always my engrave layer. So the way I approach color is black is my frame layer, blue is my engrave layer, and red is my cut layer. And that way, no matter what file I pull up, I know exactly what I'm doing with that file. And in all honesty, I don't use many more colors other than the, than the uh, black, blue, and red. Now, I will use some other colors if I've got a real intricate design and I need to add some other layers for another reason. 
but that's as simple as it gets. So what I would do is I would draw my frame layer, I would drag in my logo, I would size it, I would center it, and then what I would do if it wasn't the right color, I would color it. And then what I would do is I would come up here to my <clears throat> material library. Let's say that I was doing this on uh, wood. I, I could go to my ply, I could go to my no thickness, and select engrave. And so what I'm going to do now is as long as this is selected and the, the layer that I want this to be assigned to, I just click assign to layer. And now you see that it's just changed its uh, uh, speed and power. I'm also going to turn my air assist off because it's an engraving. And so usually I lay out my design, I color it based on a function, and then I go back into each layer, go to my art library, look for my settings, assign each setting to the different colors, and I'm done. And that way you have the ability to store all your settings here. Uh, then you have to worry about doing it here because uh, if you do have a complicated design, now you've got to remember 29 things instead of just three. So that's my approach on colors. The other thing that I will tell you is whatever this blue color or any layer is set, that's what it's going to be going forward until you change it again. You have the ability to go ahead and name these as well. So if I open this up, you can actually change the name to frame and the blue one would be engrave and so on. So give that a try. It simplifies things uh, a lot and you don't have to worry about remembering so many settings. All of your settings are going to be kept in your material library. One other thing that is critical to the function uh, between light burn and your laser is how you connect, how do you connect to your laser? And so let's talk a little bit about that. We're going to go to our laser tab, make sure it's active. And you'll notice right off the bat here that this says disconnected. So you'll always want to pay attention to this because this is actually going to tell you whether light burn is communicating with your laser or not. Usually what happens is when uh, you fire up your laser first, then you fire up uh, light burn. If this says it's disconnected, the first thing that you would normally do is come down to devices. Um, if you haven't set up your profile, you would want to go find my laser, go through those steps and then you will have a profile generated here. And so if you want to, or you need to connect Lightburn with the laser, you would select this profile, say OK, and then what would happen when it connects, this will go from disconnected to ready. And so anytime you're working in Lightburn and you want to send a file to your laser, you always want to be glancing down at this to make sure that this says it's ready. If it says disconnected, no matter what you do, you're not going to get your file to your laser. So pay attention to this indication. It's either going to say disconnected or ready. And if it says ready and you're ready to go, then you can go ahead and typically uh, hit the send button. I don't recommend using start. And the reason being is when you use start, it, it, uh, your laser goes uh, starts right away before all of the information gets to the controller and it can generate problems for you, meaning that some of your design might be missing, something like that. So I prefer to use send and start it from the controller or if you wanted to, you can also uh, hold down the shift key while you hit send and it will start it from light burn as well. But uh, that that is something that you always want to pay attention to. Just make sure this says ready and you'll be able to send your design to your laser. Well, there you have it. Some basics on the uh, desktop with Lightburn. As you can tell, this is really capable software. Um, I hope this information was helpful. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you can. I'd really appreciate that. And if you have the ability, I would really appreciate you contributing to the channel. Hit that thanks button. And until next time, thanks and have a great day.